Thank you all. It's great to be back here. This is my second time talking about Lightroom here, and uh, figured change it up a little bit and talk about tethered workflows. So here's an expanded view of what I do every time, and, and the program does most of this for me. So um, again, so we're not importing. So there's a few things you see change there on the workflow. I don't have to put my SD card in now because I'm going to plug my camera in and tether. I get it to my computer, shoot tethered instead of importing, and then I move around, make a duplicate backup, cull or sort the images, whatever word you prefer, delete my bad images. Keyword the good images, the way Lightroom works is by keywording. So the more you can keyword stuff, we're going to talk about that later, the easier time you're going to have a year from now finding a picture from New York when you're walking around here today. Edit and post process. So look at how much happens before I even start editing. And most of that is automatic. At that point, when I'm editing, I will move out of editing into more editing on plugins or in Photoshop if I need to. And then I'll rename my images at that point. The two I am in constantly is library and develop. I hide the rest of them by right clicking. I can turn them on and off just by right clicking in this area. So if I don't want print right now, I click that, it goes away. If I want to bring back the book, because I'm going to make a book. So part of workflow, of your getting a better workflow and building a better workflow is getting stuff out of your way so that you don't have to look at it, click on it, be you know using keyboard commands, just getting from one place to another very quickly. So I skipped a whole bunch of my old workflow processes so I can jump right into sorting stuff with my client, with my model, with you know the family. So they can come right over. It's on the plasma, they saw it first, but now that I bring them around the side, let's go look through these and pick out which ones you like. So I go into loop mode, which is E, that's that GED part. The thumbnails are across the bottom, which I'll show you in a second. And then I put my fingers on six, seven, and eight. That's the numbers on the top of your keyboard, six, seven, and eight. And for me, you can define these any way you see fit. I define them as red, yellow, green is delete, needs editing, and keep or pick. I also have a blue when I upload it or it's processed and I have it for sale already on Fine Art America or Smug Mug. It's already, that's my blue, so I know not to edit it again or change it or anything. Gray is also a color, skipped, and there's a purple. I don't use it because purple and blue are too close in Lightroom. They're just very similar colors. So this is how it kind of works. So like I said, you're in your, uh, your loop mode here, which just means enlarged. So um, it's a bigger view there. I pick out a color, six, seven, or eight, and then I just move on. Like this is how quick I do it. I'm not looking at the screen, but I'd normally be looking at the screen, pick a color, do I love it, do I hate it? And then when I go back to grid, I can easily look at which one I'm going to delete, which one I'm going to edit a little bit more or save as a B-roll, and which one I'm going to actually edit into a blue. All right, erasing the reds. I told you earlier, I erase as much as I can because I just don't, it's not even a hard drive space issue anymore. So you bring up your grid, G mode, so your library. The frames around them have all the colors now if you went through and color coded them. And don't fall behind on that. Keep color coding them every shoot. Try to keep on top of it. I go up to the edit menu up on top and select by color label, red, and then it's gonna select them all. And then you simply hit the delete button. So it would look like this. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna do edit. And you could do this by flag or rating too, so you don't have to adopt my color system, but it's right above it. Select by flag and select by rating. Do red. The red ones are selected now. You can see how it's kind of white, and then you basically hit delete. So this pops up. Never click remove. What remove is going to do is it's going to take it out of Lightroom, and it's going to delete it from Lightroom, but not actually delete the files. It doesn't delete the files out of your off your disk. You always want to do delete from disk, and then it's going to actually delete it out of Lightroom and delete it off of your hard drive as well. So they don't become like orphaned files where they're kind of just floating around, but you can't see them anymore. So this view mode I'm going to speak about is survey mode. The icon looks like the little icon you see up here. It lives down here, right on the bottom right there. And what happens is it's going to bring up a series of pictures. Depending how many you select, it's going to bring those up. So in this one, I selected nine pictures on here. And you select them on the bottom. You hit the little button. They populate up. As you start to go through them, and this works with similar poses, 
You don't want to actually do something that's not a pose that works. So I hit shift tab, it gets rid of all my other windows and clutter, and I just have these poses up there. So the first one's really not the same pose, so I would get rid of that one by hitting the X. Second one I don't love. Now I'm down to, you know, the jacket commercial people are looking at it, they're like, which one do you love? So we're looking at it, and they're like, well, he's looking too straight at the camera at this one. We don't like the hood in this one. And as you see what's happening, they're getting bigger as you're going through and clicking on the, the ones that they don't like, your client doesn't like, you don't like. So now we're down to these two, and they're like, yeah, we still don't love the hood, let's get rid of that one. Now you're down to your most selected one that the client picked or you picked, and you can mark that green, and then you could just hit escape and get back out of it. Now to get your tabs back on the side, you hit shift tab, all your menus pop back up again. The next mode that I would go to, and this is um, usually a little bit different type of mode, so com compare mode looks like this again, X, Y, lives in the same place, right next to survey mode, right here. So when you hit compare, it brings up the first one and the second one. You don't have to select them like with the survey mode. And you can just keep hitting your right arrow till you find one you like better. When you find one, down in the bottom right corner, oh, mine's hidden, it's right there. Well, I can do this for now. There's another button to the right there that'll actually po pop it over to the left side as my select. So you see up here it says select and candidate. The one on my left is my favorite. And then I keep going through on the one on the right till I find one better. I say, well, that's the one. That's the one GQ wants. Move it over. And then when you're ready, you can hit green, mark it green, and then escape out again. When you get 10,000, 20,000, I have over a couple hundred thousand photos now. It's just hard to find them. So when you go in and start keywording stuff, that's going to help your workflow move along. Because when you want to find something that's New York City, um, B&H, model shoot, you can type a couple words in and find it in a few seconds. When you're in that same mode, you have a little tiny spray can. And the spray can in here and in Photoshop do two totally entirely different things. This spray can sprays stuff, not paint, not writing or anything like that. So you have to be in the library mode in order to see it. It's built into your dock on the lower side, and I'll show you that in a second. So the picture there. And you're actually able to select specific keywords and you can spray them on to your pictures as you go. So that's right there on the bottom. I undocked, I change it to keywords, I type my keywords in. Now I'm gonna go to all of the ones that he's wearing a jacket in and start to click them. And you see there's a white line that goes around it that kind of highlights it. That means it's actually been keyworded already. So HSL, you have a couple different modes here. HSL and color do the same thing, just it's just the way it's configured there. So we're gonna stick in HSL. You have hue, saturation, and luminance. And you can move each one of the different colors and bring different colors in and out. So, so let's say go to the um, oranges. So you notice it's just changing him. So if we want it to look like the Hulk, we can bring oranges in or out. And that's just changing the type of color out there. So the hue of it which doesn't look very appealing in this. Saturation is how much color? Is it a lot of orange? Very orange, like Snooky? Or less or no orange? And then the luminance is how much light's coming through the orange. So do we want less light or do we want a lot of light to bleed through? So I do use these a lot if you wanna play with colors and move them around. I'll actually go through all of those. If you go over to the color mode, it just flip-flops it to where you pick the color on top instead of having the slider, and then you have sliders for hue, saturation, and luminance. Depends which way you think. When you go over to black and white, it will convert it to a black and white automatically, and then you're using them more as filters back and forth, changing the tones. I've made up metadata presets, as I showed you earlier, so when I tether shoot and when I import stuff, everything is actually done in my workflow. So everything we talked about in the whole left side of the workflow, I'll bring that picture up later, is done automatically. So I don't have to do a whole lot. I can literally just, you know, when I am importing and not tethering, I can just hit import and it just brings everything in and does it for me. So part of that is making your metadata preset ahead of time to speed that workflow up. So. You go into Edit Presets, 
in your metadata. So that lives right here. It's on a grid. So you go to grid, right side, metadata, and then you see it right here. And you can drop down and select edit presets. Brings up a window. And I'm going to bring mine up so you can see it. So it brings up a window and you have to just fill out the everything that's applicable to you. So getting into the actual editing part and developing part of Lightroom. So this is an expanded view of everything on that right side of develop. There it goes. So I, I darken those all the way down. There's two on the bottom right there. So as I bring them back up, it real time changes them. So if I select 50 or 100 or whatever it is, they're all changing. So the way I decide how I'm going to select on the bottom here is I look at the lighting on them. So when I look, when you look through your pictures, the lighting changes throughout your shoe. So moving along to exporting. So to export out, um, it's on your left side. You have a couple different ways. You can do publish services, which will let you download different services to publish right into. Facebook, Flickr, SmugMug, there's tons of them now you can put them into. And basically you put your login credentials in there for Facebook and you can go right from Lightroom to Facebook. But for the regular export, it's right here. So you have an export button. All right, so you have to have a picture selected. Oh, and I always do that too. How many times I've exported one photo? To select all the pictures you want, and then you actually get this window. Window pops up. You have a bunch of different settings. A few that I want to highlight in here are the, the size and your quality. So when you're going through, this is just a zoomed part of that. JPEG goes out to go to like Bay Photo. When I go print, I print stuff at Bay Photo. So I, they want JPEGs. I can put the quality up to 100 at that point. And then right down below in image sizing, I put it to 300 pixels per inch. So now I'm given as much quality as I can give them to print that. Now when I go to Facebook, I bring that quality back to 50%, and then I bring it down to, down to 72 resolution. And a lot of times I'll actually go into resize to fit and just lock it down to a 4x6 size, so longest edge as 6 inches. In Lightroom, I can actually do virtual copies. They all point back to a single raw file. So all of these vari variations you see up here are one raw file. And the way I can tell that is the lower corner, lower left corner, it's folded up. So those are virtual copies. So as I made it a sepia tone, as I made it black and white, a blue tone, the regular color version, they're all pointing back to one. So if you start with a color and then, or you start with say black and white and you make a copy, you're gonna have to reset the copy to get back to your color. So that's what kind of happened here. My color one is my last one. Normally I'll do the virtual copy first, but it, if you reset the virtual copy, it's not the end of the world. What's cool about these too is if you look in the upper left corner, you can actually stack all of these. So um, stacking comes in handy for this, panoramics, HDRs, Who's taken a panoramic? I've taken panoramic so many times and I'm looking at the pictures going, I, I stink as a photographer. What was I taking a picture of? It's like a half of a tree and it, then I start going through. I'm like, oh my God, it's a panoramic. So now I take them and I stick them all together. I stack them and then you can put it behind the full panoramic picture that you actually took. So you first thing you see is the completed one and then all your pictures are behind that. Simply by hitting that little four, they'll all crunch down and go behind the actual main image. And the simple way to get there is you right click on any image, go to stacking, and then this menu pops up with all these different options. The option I choose most of the time is auto stack by capture time. And you can select the time, how many seconds between shots. So when I'm doing a panoramic or an HDR, I'm shooting pretty quickly. Or if you're shooting the same pose, tethered, you're shooting pretty quickly. So you're, you're going to shoot, 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 shoot. You're waiting for the lights to recycle. You shoot again when they repose. So you can look at it and you can say how many seconds, four seconds between shots. It's going to auto stack your whole shoot and you could say collapse all those stacks. So right now in this shoot, it's going to give me nine stacks and there's going to be 23 that were too far apart where we stopped and there was a big space between it. So 23 are going to be not stacked. As you move this back and forth, 
it will change how many stacks you have. Well, thank you guys for, for coming out. There's a... Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.